Hey, Comets! Welcome to another week of learning. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, today we are starting week six. It's hard to believe. Um, we're going to be on this page right here in the packet where it talks about equations and inequalities. And uh, it talks about using substitution to identify a solution to an equation. Okay, now, remember, the most important thing to remember when you're talking about solutions and equations, a solution makes the statement true. Say it one more time, a solution makes the statement true. So if you put a number in for a variable and it doesn't make a true statement, that number is not a solution. All right, most of the time there's just one solution. But there are times we can have multiple or sometimes infinite solutions. All right, so let's take a look at number one here. All right, so basically what we're doing is we're checking to see if I put in any of these numbers from this set, that's what we call this inside the braces, um, is just a set of numbers. So if I look at this set of numbers, 4, 9, 13, 21, and 25, which, if any of them, make this equation true. If I have A and I add 0, I get 13. All right, well, <clears throat> let's think about this. If I put in <clears throat> 4, when I do 4 plus 0, will that equal 13? Okay, well, no, because if I do 4 plus 0, I get 4, and then 4 does not equal 13. So I could put a line through that and say, that is not true. Okay, next number, uh, 9. If I put 9 in for A, will that be a true statement? Okay. Well, 9 plus 0 is 9. 9 does not equal 13. Okay, so that's not a solution. All right, let's try the next one. 13. 13 plus 0, does that equal 13? And 13 plus 0 is definitely a 13. So yes, this one works. So 13, so I could list 4, 9, 13. 13 would be my solution. Okay, all right, so I would either circle 13 or I would say A equals 13, or I could just say 13 is a solution, okay? <clears throat> now, we could continue on and try these other ones, but think about it, 21 plus 0 is not going to equal 13, and 25 plus 0 is not going to equal 13, okay? So that's basically the idea here, is you take which of these numbers here, put it in for the variable, is going to make that a true statement, all right? And remember, if you have a number next to a variable, it means to multiply. If you have a number next to parentheses, it means to multiply. In this situation, you're going to want to simplify both sides, so add the 1 and the 3 together, okay? And then see if it makes a true statement, all right? I'm going to move on. Solving equations, okay? It says, uh, when solving equations, the goal is to get our variable x isolated on one side of the equation. So we need to move everything else away from x. All right? In the worked example, Isaac began by addressing the plus 6. The inverse of plus 6 is minus 6, so Isaac subtracted 6 from both sides of the equation sign. Okay? Now this kind of gets into two-step equations, which you'll probably learn about next year. Um, Isaac needed to move the coefficient 2 in order to have x by itself. 2x means 2 times x. Since the inverse of multiplication is division, Isaac divided both sides by 2. Okay, so again, what's happening to the variable? x is being multiplied by 2, added by 6. The last thing we said is the first thing we want to undo. So we're undoing the 6, and then we're undoing the 2, doing the opposite in each case. All right, so let's take a look at each of these equations. All right, we'll start with the first one. W plus 19 equals 47. All right, W plus 19 equals 47. Okay, let's take a closer look at that. What's happening to my variable? Well, my variable is W. It's being added by 19. Okay, well, what's the opposite of adding 19? Okay, well, it's subtraction, right? So we're going to subtract 19 from both sides of this equation. Remember, we want to kind of keep these balanced. Okay, so I'm going to take 19 away from this side. 
And since we're doing that, these would cancel out, so I'm left with W. I'm going to do 47 minus 19, all right? Since it's a Monday, brain's still waking up. I'm going to do 47 minus 19, I get 28. Okay, now I could check to see if I'm right by substituting in, kind of like we did in this section above. Um, I could try by putting 28 plus 19 and ask the question, does it equal 47? All right, roll the calculator again. We got 28 plus 19 and it does equal 47. So what we just did there is we checked our answer to see if we're right, okay? And it works, so we're in good shape. Okay, um, this one's very similar to that. It just has decimals, same with this one. Let's look at this one. 12P equals 48. All right, remember when I have a number next to a variable, it means to multiply. All right, so what's happening to my variable? Oops, sorry, let's get a closer look here. What's happening to my variable is it's being multiplied. So I want to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And what's going to be left over here? These simplify, and I get P equals 48 divided by 12. Oops. 48 divided by 12 gives me a 4. Okay, and again, I could check this to see if I'm right by simplify, or sorry, by putting it back in. So if I do 12p, or 4 in this case, I get 48. So 12 times 4, does that give me 48? Well, let's see here. 12 times 4. 12 times 4 does give me 48. So I know that I have it right. Okay? All right, let's see what else we got. Well, let's look at one of these with the fractions. Okay, they're a little bit tricky. All right, don't be too alarmed by it. There's several ways you can go through this. All right, I'm going to show you, I should probably be able to show you both ways. All right, so if I have 7 tenths x, and that equals 4 and 3 fifths, Okay, it's a scary looking problem here. All right, but don't be too worried about it. We know what's happening to our variable. Well, it's being multiplied, right? And we just saw that the opposite of multiplication is division. So I could technically divide both sides by 7 tenths. Okay, and I know that's a little bit intimidating because that's a weird looking fraction over here. All right, well, let's not get intimidated by it. Let's think more about it. Okay, we know on this side, these cancel out. Because it's just like having 3 over 3, that would equal 1, right? So this is going to be x, all right? And I've got 4 and 3 fifths divided by 7 tenths, right? Because that's basically what this line means here, is I'm dividing. All right, now if you think back, the way we handle division of fractions is we change it to multiplication. Before we do that, though, I think it would be good to change this into an improper fraction. So we're going to do 5 times 4, which is 20, and then add the 3. So remember, you multiply the denominator or the bottom number by the whole number out here, and you get 20, and then you add the numerator, the top number. So we get 23 fifths divided by 7 tenths. And again, this is all to figure out what x equals. Okay, that's why we're working on this. All right, now, we're going to change. We're going to keep this first fraction. Okay. I don't know if you remember, keep change flip, KCF. 23 over 5 times 10 over 7. Why? Because I'm keeping this fraction. I'm changing division to multiplication, and I'm flipping this fraction. See how it was 7 tenths? Now it's 10 over 7. All right, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply. I get 230 over 35. Now, can I simplify that? I'm thinking so. Let's try it out. Okay, so go to the calculator, and I get 230 divided by, why not? Let's try it. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so I can't divide it 
exactly, but let's get close. Let's see, um, maybe five. So if I do 230 divided by five, I get 46. And if I do 35 divided by five, I get seven. So 46 over seven, okay? For me, that's a good enough answer there, all right? I could leave it like that, all right? So I've got 46, so I got x equals 46 sevenths, okay? And that would be my answer here, all right? So good luck on those. Thanks for watching, and um, next time we'll go to the next page, and thank you for staying engaged. We'll see you next time. Bye.